it's been a it's been a good fall. We've got a healthy roster, which is always great to start the season. Um, really excited about Sunday's game, uh, exhibition game, benefiting uh, the Maui uh, fires and just that relief. Had actually a lot of people contact us from that area that we have relationships with that said they're thankful and appreciative. Um, obviously, our opponent being A and M has is a is an NCAA tournament team. I mean, we look at them; they're going to have the preseason SEC Player of the Year. So it's just a great great opportunity to get under the lights at uh, UNT at the Super Pit on Sunday at 4:30. So we need a game like this just to get us ready for the season and um, for the purpose of getting our team some experience in a real game setting. We had a scrimmage against UTEP that I thought went well just because we got to learn about our team and play against someone else. But there's also something about being in a real game environment. So looking forward to uh, that exhibition game and, and, uh, and having our fans get an opportunity to watch us play and to play in a great venue. Uh, Coach, on a scale of 1 to 10, um, how important do you believe team chemistry is to winning? Oh, it's a 10. I mean, it, I think it's off the scale. Um, it's the biggest emphasis we've had in our fall preseason in preparation for the season is just how together we can be in tough times. And I think that's determines your growth as a team is how connected you can be. And uh, this is a question I probably should have asked last time, but uh, when, when you guys are putting together a non-conference schedule, um, what are you looking for in the, in the opponents? I mean, are you looking for a variety of styles? Or are you looking for a variety of competitive level? Or, or how does that work? Well, in the short term, we had and, and we needed every home game when we uh, got here. So every home game was scheduled with us and trying to figure out really – how do we get quality opponents that we feel like we will benefit us when we prepare ourselves for the Big 12? Honestly, that's it. And, you know, I mean, I think every team you got to look at uniquely because these days you can't just say, let's play this program. I mean, you have to look at the roster and you have to look at the makeup and who they have returning. And I mean, I think there's a lot of depth to it. If I wanted to just give a general statement about our scheduling philosophy, we want it to be difficult and challenging. I will say that because I do think the, the, the better prepared you are for Big 12 play and I would like to play quality home games. I really would. I mean, if we're going to play a home game, I'd, I'd like to play a quality opponent. Um, but I do think that there's some styles that won't benefit us come in Big 12 play. And so when you ask that, you know, styles, it, it probably does matter some, but really we're just looking at rosters and trying to make sure that we can build a quality schedule that will prepare us for when we get to conference. Coach, uh, you've made your desire very clear, you know, in terms of wanting to play faster. I'm just curious, is that, you know, talking to your half-court offense, is that looking to pit, push to pace more in transition, or is it all of – facets of your game yeah um that's a gr that's a great question obviously tempo is is a discussion that we've had a lot and especially since our staff has been a part of some of the slower tempos in the country the last few years um what I will tell you is a lot of it depends on our defense and if we can get stops I think that'll determine the tempo of the game uh if we can't get stops it's difficult to play in transition we have practiced pretty significantly pushing the ball on misses and trying to uh, uh, create uh, opportunities off misses. So really, I think our, dic our defense will dictate a lot of our pace. And uh, you know, your big rotation, um, Warren's kind of maybe the only quote unquote uh, true big. I know your tendency is to play a bit smaller. Um, how do you feel about that position? Yeah, one, I feel great uh, just because we're healthy right now. And I think anytime you can go into a season with everybody prepared to play, um, we've played a lot of different people at different forward positions. I think in college these days, if you watch teams that are great, they can do both, right? You can play with size and then you can go smaller. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with who you have to defend. Uh, so I will say we've played, you know, a lot of different guys. I'm excited about EY. We, Emily Yalaho, we call EY. 
Um, I think he's been great. And then Rob Jennings and Kai Lindsey, I mean, both all four of those guys, I think, in a, in a cycle will get different opportunities at, at playing those forward spots. And uh, speaking of Warren, um, as his career went on at Washington State, it looked like they used him a little bit more as a passer, you know, with the cutters and things like that. I'm just wondering if that's something you guys have tried to develop and what have you seen from him? Yeah, and, you know, he did a, he did a good job at Arizona State of taking them to the NCAA tournament and his feel for the game and I think his passing ability is the most underrated part of who he is. So we've definitely tried to utilize that in practices. <laughs> fully realizing that you've got your first game coming up and it hasn't happened yet. But uh, as you look at your roster right now and have seen what these guys are doing in practice, who's your go-to guy for your last second shot right now or maybe a couple of guys that are in that competition right now? Yeah, I, honestly, I've, I, we haven't determined that. You know, I think you got to start anytime you look at guard play specifically. You know, the guys that have the most experience in the Big 12 are Pop and Joe. I mean, both those guys being ball handling guards, both of them have the ability to create for themselves and others. And I, I think that would that would be where we start and where you go from there kind of depends on matchups and time and score, uh, what you need. Uh, but those two guys have led us up to this point. And on the flip side of that, who's been your best one on one defender to take that position away from the other team at this point? Yeah, you know, I think our, our team defense has improved significantly. I mean, honestly, I think Devin Cambridge has the ability to be an elite defender in our league. And his athleticism, his instincts, his nose for the ball, I mean, really has been tremendous. So I wouldn't be afraid to put him on anybody at the end of the game if we needed a big stop. And I think you can answer this question. If you can't, I completely understand. Go into the scrimmage. What was your biggest takeaway from what you saw from your guys there? One, uh, the, the guys at UTEP, Joe Golding does a tremendous job. Uh, I mean, I love to play against someone that's physical. I mean, I think if you're going to say where, where do we need to improve, probably needs to be in our ability to rebound. We've made big strides in that area. I mean, I walked away knowing that, hey, we can team rebound and we'll get better. And, and that was a big emphasis going into the game. And I felt like we, we've we responded and gotten better there. So my, my biggest takeaway was, hey, physicality is going to be where we need to improve the most. And we took a step in the right direction. Coach, I know you just talked a little bit about trying to play with more pace on the offensive side of the ball. But I guess how do you feel like the personnel that you've brought in, how do you feel like they really complement wanting to play that, that faster style of ball? Does that mic even work? <laughs> Are we just talking like – to each other. Uh, shoot, I've been at North Texas. We don't have this many people showing up at press conferences. We can just talk if you want. The mic, I guess, signifies who gets the chance. Um, uh, no, um, you know, our speed and athleticism as a team, I love it. I really do. I think it's our emphasis. And, and that being multiple ball handlers, when you look at our roster, I think a Darian Williams had 90 assists and 30 turnovers as a true freshman at Nevada. That's a remarkable numbers. I mean, like, and he led them in rebounding. So when you've got multiple ball handlers and you look at Lamar Washington, Chance McMillan, I mean, obviously Pop and Joe, you just have multiple guys that can handle the basketball. I just love our ability to share it and to move it. And then we've talked about Warren in being an improved passer, he's a really he's a great decision maker and passer. So how do you keep teams on their heels and don't let them load up to one person, right? How do you not allow it to be about one guy having the ball in one spot consistently? So I think our ability to, to pass the basketball has been something that I've loved. And we've struggled when we've dribbled a lot and we've been great when we pass. So I think our roster is really built on the ability to move and put pressure on defenses with our movement and and trying to attack people early with, with some great cutting and athleticism. And we do have an athletic roster. And you just mentioned Chance. I mean, you got so much talent there at that kind of guard wing spot. I guess, what do you feel like his role could really be this season? Uh, you know, Chance has shot it and been a, a threat to shoot the basketball. He's actually a great offensive rebounder, and he and he's and he's fast in his ability to to get in the space, whether it be on the perimeter to catch and shoot or run in transition. So it's just been good. We got a lot of movement 
and a lot of guys that have the ability to to run and he seems one of those guys that best when he can move freely and in tight spaces man he can move uh so how do you free him up where he's not having to over dribble really i think is where where we we see him being best Hey, Coach, one of the things that many teams expect out of Texas Tech throughout the years is to play some solid defense. Um, last year, it r wasn't really the case, ranking 86 in the nation in defense. Meanwhile, your North Texas team ranked ninth. Uh, so I guess take me through what, what were some of the changes that you maybe saw from film of last year and changing that here this offseason. I know you mentioned that the, the defense has had a major upgrade throughout this offseason. Well, I, you got to start with how you're going to defend ball screens and whether you're going to switch them and how comfortable you are with switching all over the floor. I think we'll do some switching, but how do you maintain kind of keeping the ball in front? I mean, rotations, and there's been some rule changes, I think, that are concerning just to figure out how it's going to be officiated. I mean, what we've been told is 90% of those plays that were charges are now going to be called blocks. And if that's the case and those are kind of the numbers, then – being in rotations and forcing people to rotate into coverages that you know you're in may not be beneficial. Um, and so, honestly, I think we're going to have to adjust over the course of the season. And if you ask me where, it's like how do we find that balance of people we want to switch with and people we don't. That will be kind of the key, I think, to the defense. And when you watched over the course of the season, and I've watched pretty closely the last few years, it just you don't want to have two people on the ball for very long. It, it, it causes problems and puts people in tough spots. And so how do you communicate that clearly? And how do you make sure you identify who's guarding the ball so that way you can load the rest of your defense? And that's been a big emphasis is not having two on the ball as consistent maybe as it was last year. Also, you have a few fifth-year seniors, but still it seems like a bulk of this group is still young, whether it be their first year being a freshman or first year via transfer or heading into the sophomore season. I guess what have you kind of seen from those young guys stepping up and really try to collaborate this culture together and, and, and uh, win young? Yeah, I mean, when you're starting uh, starting over with a program and a philosophy and a staff, I mean, everybody's new, right? And then you're just looking at a, a, lot, of, a lot of guys that have a lot to learn. I will say this about this group from the very beginning. From the time we met them in the summer, they actually really like being around each other. And I've referenced this a couple of times, but there's a practice about two and a half weeks ago where every one of our players was in the cold tub together. And so that's crazy to me, you know? I mean, you just don't see that very often. They're a connected group, and that's kind of been the point of emphasis. That's where this team, I think, will grow and get better throughout the course of the season. And so anytime you add this many new guys, I think the way they care about each other really will ultimately determine how successful your team will be. Now, early, there'll be some things that we got to get better at. I think it'll be obvious. People are like, man, they're not very good at this. But this group is really connected to each other, and I do think we've got the makeup to, to get better over the course of the season and when tough times come this group will this group will stay together coach uh, what's the ultimate goal on Sunday against A&M uh, other than coming out of the thing completely healthy <laughs> yeah well yeah like you said being healthy I, I, I honestly I've looked at it myself like trying to evaluate like how, how do we want to do this right do we do we want to do we want to try to play lineups and try to play matchups and try to see learn more about our team and you know there's a difference in these exhibitions you can like hey I'm going to play as many guys as we can to try to get a feel or are we going to try to just play this game to ultimately give us the best chance to win and I think we'll we'll merge the two right I think we'll try to give some different lineups over the course of the game but when we get to the end of it I think it'll be real specific and how do we how do we win this basketball game so I, I think the focus is let's let's keep identifying you know, different lineups and try to make sure we give a good look. And then when you get to the end, let's put let's put those guys out there. We feel like give us the best chance to win. And you mentioned, obviously, it's for, uh, you know, relief efforts for Maui. But uh, how did the conversation start with A&M and I mean, getting that match up together? Because that's intriguing no matter what it is, obviously. Yeah, I think you, one, you just got to start with in state schools that we feel like can give us a uh, a great test like who who in the and you look across the state and now with Houston joining the league and I think that's been a scrimmage that's happened in the past and like who regionally if you're gonna do a relief game makes the most sense to have the most benefit for the cause and I, and I know 
people have been asking, and, and obviously with Texas and Oklahoma leaving the league, I think there'll be an interest to try to play. So I think just like anybody, I grew up in the state of Texas. I mean, why wouldn't we want to play each other? I, I mean that sincerely. I'm not trying to say it just to, as a ploy to try to get someone to have a conversation about it. I mean it. Like, why wouldn't we try to try to play those games? And so I think this was just a step in the right direction to one, play a super quality opponent to find out about ourselves, and then two, try to play someone regional that I think would 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 be a benefit to not only the people to our fan base and want to watch the game and want to see it and I do think it'll benefit the the Maori relief